All right, Matrix Live, um, here we go. We're going to go super fast. Uh, we're going to hear all about Element X. We've got lots of people um, who talk about that. And we're also going to hear from Eric Eastwood to talk about the uh, Matrix Public Archive. And pre-recorded, we have uh, some detail, more details about Element X. Hubert on MLS and Madhun is going to tell us about um, what's been going on in Hydrogen Lab. So without further ado, uh, Alfonso, if you're out there, you have the floor. Hello, hello. Let, let me share my, my screen first. OK, uh, here you can see Element Tech's iOS running. And I want to share with you a um, set of features we are working on related with the, basically, with the creation of the rooms, joining rooms, invites, but also searching users. So let's start with. Uh, um, creating a new room, a direct room. Uh, you may notice that down below uh, there is a new button bar with this button. So when you tap on it, uh, the user can either create a new room uh, or um, engage in a direct uh, conversation. I'm going to show just the direct uh, conversation here. So uh, in the top bar, you can search for someone. For example, I'm writing foo here, and you can get all the uh, all the people the home server uh, provide uh, to the client. And if you also got the full matrix identifier of a person you want to chat with, you can just type here like this. Right, and in this case, uh, uh, the um, in this case, you, you, uh, the we just get the profile of the matrix identifier the user typed in, and if you by mistake uh, write the wrong uh, matrix identifier, um, we show this kind of red flag to tell to the user, okay, this uh, matrix identifier may be wrong. It's up to you if you want to, to try to start the chat anyway. So in this case, I'm going to correct uh, the match identifier and tap on this result here. And magically, I'm in with this, um, with, with, with this contact in a, direct, uh, in a direct room. So I can just type hello. Uh, what else? Uh, um, Second thing, a related thing, you may have noticed that we have another piece of UI on top of our rooms here, the invites uh, with um, a green badge, meaning that I have invites I need, to, I need to read. So I'm tapping on that and I got two new invites. And if I go back, uh, the badge uh, disappeared and if I open again um, the screen back, I don't see any badge anymore. So um, let's try to uh, accept the first one. So accepting uh, the invite, I just joined the, the room with this user. So I can type anything here. Again, hello. And if I go back and decline the other one just to show the other flow i get a nice warning here i can just decline the invite and that's it for um for the invitations while we were speaking i received another another invite just now and you see the invites uh button popping again with the with the green badge telling me that i have other invites to be to be read. Uh, finally, uh, we also um, introduced um, the context menu for, for rooms. So if you long press on any room in the home screen, you can, first of all, go straight into the room details where you can, in this case, since this is a direct room, you can block, for example, the user, or if you do the same in a group room like this, uh, you can see the members or leave the room 
it's just a short a shortcut for seeing the details. But I can also leave uh, uh, the room using the same context menu like this. Leave room, yes, and uh, the room is out. And yeah, that's it for me. Enjoy these new features on Element X soon. All right, Doug and Mauru, are you out there? Yeah, I think um, uh, if, if that's okay for Doug, I can start, right? Yep. Okay, cool. So let me share my uh, simulator screen. Is everyone able to see it? Okay, perfect. So um, recently, um, I've developed uh, pretty much the representation for uh, push notifications, even if the notification that you're going to see today here in this demo are not real push notifications. They are local notifications, which pretty much serve more of a niche cases, like for example, macOS, or uh, the case of um, um, people chatting over matrix into an intranet that has no internet access, or maybe just because maybe APNS is low and you want to receive notification faster than APNS in some cases. So, but the concept is the same. Local notification work exactly as push notifications. So, and they have the capabilities of being decrypted right now. When I said about push notifications, we are still working on decrypting them. So, yeah, uh, let's see how notification would appear and will appear on Element Tax. I'm now going to send myself a notification, uh, actually, a message. As you can see, I received the message bot here, but also received a very nice notification containing the message. I received a plenty of them. So yeah, this old notification will will look like on um, uh, on Element X. So, as you can see, you have the name of the person that sent you the notification as title, the content of the notification, and also a very nice image of the person that sent you um, a notification here. And that's not uh, that's not all. If, for example, you're sending something like a file, a media, like an image, or an audio, or a video, you can actually also see a very nice preview of your notification. Let's see one, for example. I don't know how to do the, the long tap on the, the simulator. OK. Uh, to send another one, right click. It's right click. No, not the way you do that on the simulator, I guess. Uh, let me try to send it again. Maybe I'm missing something. Friend is Command Shift Two. <laughs> command Shift Two. And Command Shift One. It Still not working. I have no idea why. I want to just do the long tap, and I cannot do that. Oh my god! Ah, oh, that's so bad. Um. Well, I mean, that's not the. the I, I will send pretty much how, how they would look like when you tap them on the device after on the. I, I will attach some videos on how they would look like. Uh, instead, let's see what happens when instead I send a message directly inside the um, uh, a room, like for example, this one that I made for testing purposes. As you can see in this specific case, instead, we want to represent the notification by having uh, the uh, name of the person that sent you the notification, then the room name, and then the content of the notification. Uh, of course, the, all these designs are work in progress. This is pretty much what we have uh, we've seen also by looking at our competitors. And now, pretty much, this seems to be like the the best way to represent notifications, both for DMs and for room cases. So, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I would really like to show you guys how the the representation uh, is seen when it's uh, in the full screen, but honestly, I don't know how to open it on the simulator right now. I'll send some screenshots later. 
Thanks. That's all. I am really looking forward to ships in Element X. Um, scripting the, uh, the notifications is going to be such a big deal. By the way, I just did it. <laughs> just last moment, I was able to. to ah, find there, out we there we go. There we go. Later. <laughs> so here they are. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Is is Doc also demoing, or shall we move on to Eric? Hello. Yeah, I've got a quick demo as well. Um, so if I share my simulator. On gross. <laughs> Does that come up? Yep. Um, so I'm going to do a demo of using um, OpenID Connect on Element X. Um, so if I go and open up the, the the login screen, like as you've seen at the moment, if you're using it, we've currently only got username and password login, and we haven't got any other way to log in to say your company server or using social logins and so on. Um, and the reason for that is that we've gonna we're going to be doing logins through um, OIDC. Um, so now, if I change my home server to one that supports OIDC. Um, we replace the username and password form with um, a button to continue. And when I do that, um, it's going to iOS is going to say, are you happy to authenticate using element.dev, which is my home server? So I hit continue. Um, and now I get a, a form to sign in with. So uh, um, and now that I've logged into my account, I get a prompt just to say, like, am I happy for Element X to access various bits of information and so on on my behalf? So I will hit allow, and I will now be logged into the app. Um, so one of the nice things about this is because we're now using um, a web session to sign in, if I sign out again quickly, um, I'm still signed in to that session in Safari. So if I go to sign in again, so, uh, um, the next time I try and sign in, I'll get the same flow. But it, it remembers through Safari that who I am. So I don't need to type in my username or my password anymore. I can literally just say, yep, I'm happy to allow that. And I am back into the app. So yeah, let's open ID Connect. And um, this will be our solution for non-passwords. Um, native password login. So when we last saw Alice, she was able to create a group encrypted with MLS, uh, but she wasn't able to uh, talk with anyone else. She was only able to uh, write herself, uh, which might be okay for some people, but Alice has friends that she wants to talk to. Uh, so in this demo, we're going to uh, show how she can uh, talk with other people over MOS. So I'm going to uh, log in as Alice. And uh, Alice is going to create a room, use MOS. And uh, she is going to invite her friend Bob. Uh, now, Bob is going to be on a different home server. Uh, you can see Alice is on localhost colon 8480, and Bob is on localhost 8481. So I can then log in as Bob. There's the invite from Alice. And Alice can write a message to Bob. And there's Alice's message. Uh, now this uh, unable to decrypt here is a uh, MLS commit message, which basically is a message to the room indicating that the MLS tree is uh, has changed uh, and to notify the group members of how to update their own copies of their MLS trees. Uh, now, since Bob was 
not um, part of the group before. Uh, this is an expected unable to decrypt. Um, so he isn't supposed to be able to uh, decrypt this message. Um, it also shows up on Alice's side because uh, she sent it herself. And um, in MOS, you can't decrypt uh, messages that you sent yourself. You're supposed to just remember what you said. Uh, anyways, um, Bob is now going to invite uh, their mutual friend, Carol, to the room. She is on localhost 8482, so yet another home server. So I will log in as Carol now. Here's the invite from Bob. Accept the invite. Uh, and of course, since um, since Carol uh, wasn't in the room, she can't uh, decrypt earlier messages. Uh, but Bob can now send a message. And both Alice and Carol can decrypt it. Uh, Carol can send a message. And both Bob and Alice can decrypt. And uh, Alice can send a message. And both uh, Bob and Carol can decrypt it. So here we have uh, MOS working. Uh, you can invite people. Uh, people can also be removed. Uh, and it's all working uh, within a federated environment. Eric, are you out there? I'm here. So hopefully bandwidth is resolving still. So I previously showed off uh, Matrix Public Archive before, but um, today you'll probably be a lot more excited because there's something for you to actually use. We have an instance running, archive.matrix.org, um, and as the name suggests, this allows you to um, view world-readable matrix rooms um, day by day, or you can go back, um, go year by year, and we can go check one of those out. More importantly, it also allows Google to do the same thing. So you'll probably start seeing um, matrix content from your favorite search engine and be able to harness the massive knowledge base that exists on matrix today. So we go back to February this year. Um, under the hood, we're using MSC 3030 for this jump to date feature. And we can see back at this time, we see someone who shared Matthew um, demoing at FOSDEM, doing a whole talk here. Um, and when we do this jump to date, we server-side render with hydrogen. So this gives us this pretty and native to element feeling UI. And then it also moves all the maintenance of future event types to hydrogen. So like when we get polls or threads, all that stuff will just be automatically supported in the archive. Um, if you want to go check out the project, contribute, see what's follow what's going on. There's a matrix public archive on GitHub. Should be pretty, pretty easy to contribute to, just a bunch of JavaScript stuff. Um, and also shout out to Ria Danzi from the SRE team for working on this deployment. It's not quite all buttoned up talking in this demo today, but hopefully by the time this video goes up next week, everything is good to go. So go check out archive.matrix.org. Uh, go start linking it, referencing it everywhere, and we'll hopefully see everything pop up on Google or your favorite search engine soon. It's basically the new portal into the Matrix ecosystem. All right, Matrix people, that's your lot. Good luck. Thanks, everybody. Sorry for overrunning. Have an amazing long weekend if you get one. If not, I'm so sorry. Bye. <laughs>